Well, everyone, welcome back to a very exciting episode of the Story Box podcast. Today, my friends, I'm delighted to welcome two incredible human beings. They're both a husband and wife couple, and I'm sure many of you would know who they are. Uh, Crystal Hansen and Mark Victor Hansen. Now, for those of you that don't know for some reason who these incredible people are, you're about to get to know more about them, but I'll I'll speak to who Crystal is for a moment and then I'll go into Mark uh, as well. But Crystal is an international speaker, researcher, corporate consultant, author, entrepreneur, the whole works. Her expertise is in the field of human potential, which I absolutely love as well through her years spent as a transformational life coach, if I can say it correctly, and wellness nutrition expert she has seen people uh, experience profound and lasting transformation in relationships, career, health, and wellness by tapping into their own inner resources, which I'm very interested in. Uh, she has also co-written a book with her husband, Mark, which we will talk about today called Ask. He's holding it up for people that are watching the video, The Bridge from Your Dreams to Your Destiny. It's a very interesting title and indeed, and I cannot wait to get into it. But Mark Victor Hansen, for those people that don't know who he is, is probably world renowned for also incorporating uh, and being a part of Jack Canfield's Chicken Soup for the Soul series or, or books, book series that has sold quite literally over 500 million copies. He's also been a part of other book projects. You've written over 307 plus books, which is honestly insane. <laughs> and you've co-authored many more too. Uh, some of them include The Power of Focus, The Aladdin Factor, Dare to Win, One Minute Millionaire, and so many more. You're also a very high in demand speaker. And I, I could go on and on and on about both of your amazing achievements, but can I welcome you both so much to the Storybox podcast today? We're delighted to be with you, Jay. It just couldn't be better. We're happy for you and we're happy that uh, we're going to wake up everybody that's listening. How's that? Especially we've been to Australia. I've been there 12 times. Love it every time. We've been there a bunch of times together and just think the world of all the Aussies. Yeah. I absolutely love that. Let's uh, awaken some people's potential during this conversation. Uh, Before we do that, though, I have one question that I would love to ask to both of you. Now, Mark, you've probably uh, been asked this question many times, and, and maybe even Crystal, you have too, but I'm curious to know your answer. But what does success look like for you? Who wants to go first? Crystal first. Um, Oh, I'm first. Okay. Success. What success looks like to me is having, um, all the resources that I need to do all the things that I want to do basically. Um, yeah. And, and keeping that balance in my life. That's what success looks like to me. For me, success is asking yourself, what do I want to be? What do I want to do? What do I want to have? And then, uh, resulting in all that. And, and I've been doing that for, you know, 50 plus years and love every minute of my life and, and existence. And, and I'm thrilled to share that because a goal is simply a dreamy destination with a deadline to get bigger, better, stronger, smarter, and wiser. And that's what I want to help everybody do. Yeah. I love both of those answers. I want to get to the resources part and uh, in just a moment, but I wanted to ask you both, uh, when was the moment that you realized that this in fact was success for you? Has it been like this gradual thing over time or was there more a catalyst moment somewhere in your lives? I think for me, you definitely reach that point where you start to understand, especially when you start to achieve success and you realize like you make a bunch of money and you realize, well, it's not just about money, right? I also need time. I need time freedom because that makes me successful. If I have the time to do the things I really enjoy, that's part of my success. So it's sort of, for me, it's sort of um, this balanced combination of, of things that create this total success in my life. You know, family is so important to me. Um, being able to have the resources to basically, um, and I'm not talking about giving money, but, you know, give like express to my family and, and spend that amazing time and energy, having energy, you know, uh, to give to my family, to be with them, to enrich their lives. All of that, all of those things come together to help us feel, at least for me personally, that I'm living a successful life. It's never just about one thing. You know, I know so many people who have lots of money and are so, so empty inside. And I wrote, I went through a very painful, expensive divorce long, long, long ago. And I wrote down 267 things I needed and and wanted and desired attributes, qualities, characteristics, and my ideal wife. We had the same values, 
wanted to travel the world, wanted to do all these things and be together 100%. And our kids, if we each had them separately, had to get along. And then I found her. I never told her until after we got married. So the greatest success I've had is marrying the wisest, most beautiful, wonderful woman. And, and we've been married a long, long time. And our kids all get along, so it's great. And our grandkids, six grandkids love us. So we're very thankful. Wow. I would love to hear the story behind how you two met because I feel like it's going to be an interesting one. <laughs> it is sort of interesting. Well, okay, I'll start. So um, I had a life coaching practice in Scottsdale at the time, and, and I was writing a book, my first book called Pure Thoughts for Pure Results. And my mom got an email one day and called me and said, you've got to go to this event. It's called Author 101 <laughs> and uh, in LA. And, uh, you know, publishers and publicists will be there. And Mark Victor Hansen will be there too. And I was like, oh, woo, mom. Okay, when is it? She goes, it's the day after tomorrow. I said, I can't do that. I don't have anyone to watch the kids. She goes, I'll watch the kids. Because I was recently divorced. And so I was like, okay, let me call them because it's probably sold out. Usually these events are sold out if it's that close. Called the uh, promoter. I called them uh, that moment. And within five minutes, the promoter of the event himself called me back, which was interesting. Usually it would be like his assistant or something. It was Rick Frischman. He was a big publicist at the time. He said, no, Crystal, we'd love to have you come on over. So I'm like, gosh, this thing has a life of its own. I guess I'm going to this event. You know, mom wants me to go. Rick's saying, come over. Okay. So a day and a half later, I'm there. Mark's the keynote speaker. I'm in the VIP room after I was talking to a speaking coach. He's in the corner surrounded by an entourage of people. And I decided I wasn't even going to drink any. There were cocktails and things. I was like, I'm not drinking. I'm going to tell my story. I'm going to talk about my business. I'm, I am all business tonight, right? So ironically, this woman standing next to me is talking with her hands and she whacked a whole glass of red wine on my white pants. Me, the girl who's not even drinking, right? Oh so Mark must have been looking my way because he comes rushing over. And he's like, I'm so sorry. Let me help you find the club soda. <laughs> I think I know where it is. And he pulled me out of the room. I'm like, okay, thanks. Gee, thanks. <laughs> so, so he did know where the kitchen was because he had hold, held so many of his own events in that same hotel. So we found the club soda, started talking. He's like, what do you do? I told him about the amazing breakthroughs my clients were having, like being depressed their whole lives, free of depression, anxiety their whole lives, free of anxiety, you know, and I had to write about it in this book. And he and he's like, I am so interested in what you're doing. I feel something about you that you have the ability to help so many people, especially women, but I'm starving. You want to go to dinner? And I said, sure, you know, but let me go change my pants first. It was funny because I ran upstairs and called my mom. I was like, I have to be quick, mom. How are the kids? And uh, she said, they're great. And I said, you won't believe this. I'm going to dinner with Mark Victor Hansen. And she goes, I knew it. <laughs> she was like, I was like, you did? <laughs> oh, moms are funny that way. They're kind of intuitive, I think. They they know, don't they? <laughs> they know, <laughs> they know they before know. you do. <laughs> yeah. Kind of crazy. I invited her out to dinner and, and I said, but we got to go off property. There's a thousand people here and they all want two minutes of my time and I'm not going to get to talk to you. And I convinced her to do that. So we're in Hollywood and we go to the top restaurant that I knew and there's like 50 people outside at 930 at night. And they go, well, this isn't good. And a hundred dollar bill won't get me in. So what's going to work? So we just boldly walk up to the guy who's a gatekeeper and he looks at her. And for those of you listening and not getting to see it, Look, protrudeness, beauty just emanates out of every pore <laughs> of my wife's being and soul. <laughs> and the guy goes, okay, I give up. Who is she? <laughs> now, remember, we're teaching asking questions. So I'm goofing around. So I say, you don't recognize her? <laughs> now, the guy's mind goes on steroids. He's gone through People Magazine, Vanity Fair, In Style, every magazine we've got in America. He says, oh, I don't. So who is she now? I'm still goofing around. I said, she's a queen of Denmark because we're both painted. <laughs> He says, no, she's not. And all of a sudden he goes, oh, my gosh, she is. Who are you? I said, back to questions. And I'm goofing, but I said, who travels to the queen? The king. Ooh, hold on a second. I got you a table. And, and all those people that were waiting and, and got to wait so longer because we got a table. It was crazy. We didn't realize. We're like, oh, I don't think he thought we were kidding. <laughs> we rushed back to the, to the back of the restaurant. We're like, okay, let's roll with it. Might as well. Wow. And we just... Fell indefatigably in love yeah. that night. And then she says, well, I got to take care of the kids for the three months, so I can't even see you. So we had a telephone romance. I, I was like, I'm not ready to date yet. I'm just, my divorce is too new. I have my summer plan with the kids. But it was so great because what it forced me, we would talk by phone. He lived in California. I lived in Arizona. And 
Yeah, we would just talk about all these amazing things. And we got to know each other incredibly well by being phone friends. And he would always sign his emails in friendship. And then at the end of the summer, after I'd done all these great things with my kids, he's like, are you ready now? And I said, yeah, I'm ready to get together. So we started dating at that point and we've never stopped. That is amazing. That it was a very interesting story. And it kind of like was bringing up a lot of questions for me. And even in the area of asking questions to begin with, and especially because that's how my parents kind of did it. Like, even though they they like had, they would just be on the phone for hours and hours on end yes. getting to know each other. And nowadays it's kind of like text message. And it's weird how there's been that, that shift. So I'm curious, like, uh, in re- revolving around questions, how did you know what questions to ask to mark every single time you're on the phone? Right, exactly. Well, I just really wanted to understand him as a person and in all the areas that were important to me. You know, I wanted to understand one of the most important things to me is your spiritual values, because I'm I feel like this life is really a spiritual journey for me. I feel like we are these, you know, spiritual beings having ex- experience in this physical body. And so it was amazing because we both aligned so much at that level. Um, and so we we had so many similar people that we've known and, you know, work that we've done. And it was just so fun to ask those questions and probe and get a little deeper, you know, find out uh, what happened um, in our childhood, our respective childhoods, and you know how how we developed our ideas and transcended where we came from, and all of those things that come out when you start asking questions. And in the book um, that we're talking about, you know, we have that section on asking in personal relationships because it's so important. I think people don't take the time to really ask and ask these deeper probing questions where you really start to understand the person. I mean. I can't believe people will actually get married and go, oh, I, you know, I really want kids and he does it. Well, really? You guys didn't talk about that? And these things become problems. Like you never explored, asked enough questions to explore the values that each of you hold dearly. And those things that some people hold so strongly that they're not going to change. And so if you think you're going to get into a relationship and change someone, we can all grow and evolve together. But there has to be this desire, right? This this desire to kind of move on that path together. And so asking those right questions, and there are so many great questions in the book, but can it can really help you move down that path together. And it it's super exciting, too. It makes the whole dating process like so much better. Mm. How about for you, Mark? Like, I'll, I'll ask you the same question I asked your wife. Uh, what? How did you know what questions to ask Crystal when you're on the phone to her? Wow, wow, that is a. I never heard that before. Such a good uh, it's a great question. We are, live in the question. We think questions are the answer. So, um, I don't. I, I just. You know, starting with, will you go with me to lunch and then uh, our dinner it was. Yeah. And then, you know, can I ask you about you? And, and uh, whatever she said, I just, I was, I was indefatigably in love. I was smitten to use a good uh, English term. And uh, it happened so fast that I couldn't stop asking her questions. And, and we even have a romantic story about our nephew and niece who, yeah, and uh, you know, they're both super bright and they started a relationship with asking questions. But we lived in the question for three months about everything and I said well what do you want to do here what do you like this and I was finding out that she was everything that I was hoping for and then we discovered that both of us take too many vitamins and herbs and and <laughs> medicaments every so day because we, we you know my goal is to live to be 127 with oxygen and yeah. and she was taking the same amount and I thought wow that is great <laughs> she knew like you heard, did in the introduction she knows nutrition what you got to do to stay sublimely healthy because you only got one shot through this isn't a dress rehearsal so we're asking about you know what would it be like if we were indefatigably in love and we just kept letting it evolve and it was amazing that's a great question i never heard before yeah were you ever afraid to ask a question of each other of each other yeah did you ever think it was too personal to ask and when did you know it was the right time to ask it I think that's a really great thing that the feeling Mark and I each had together, I I think I can speak for both of us on this, is we um, were very comfortable with each other, Um, very comfortable, just 
we felt like there was just a harmony between us and that we could really ask anything, talk about anything from the beginning, right? I mean, I remember that first conversation at the restaurant. I felt like I was talking to a person I'd known for many, many years. Like, mm. it was really crazy. Mm. And I've written down 267 yeah. things that I said I needed my ideal wife. And, you know, and I was asking her all those kind of questions about what are your values? What are your beliefs? What are your desires? Mm -hmm. Where do you want to go? You know, what would it look like if you were arriving at success for yourself mm -hmm. and happiness and joy and love? And what do you want for your kids? And I want to make sure that both of us wanted the same kind of things because, you know, all that stuff matters by asking those right questions. So it, I'm, I'm interested in that, that list of 200 something questions that you wanted to ask. Did she match up to all those questions? She not only matched up that and more, but <laughs> I teach that when you write a goal, you don't cross out. I got the milk, I got the eggs, I got the butter. You write down in purple, God's highest color, victory next to it. So I, I put them in a, in a the recent book, Chicken Soup for the uh, 20th Anniversary Sold, just because it's a, you know, I, a lot of people have asked for it and that's where they're cool. printed. So how do you, like, here's something that I'm very interested in. Um, if, how do you know more, more specifically going into the, the person, like, let me, let me, let me backtrack. I, I want, I'm just missing the question that I wanted to ask. Sorry. Um, uh, what was it? Damn. Now I'm losing my questions. <laughs> Sorry. You know what? I think I, I have something that I think is really helpful right here, Jay. And tell me, so if you think so too. So one of the things Mark and I discovered in this whole, we, you know, asking journey, because what we're saying is we're inviting people to take the asking journey with us. We discovered that it's, that there are actually three critical areas that you need to learn to ask. It's not just asking other people. It's asking yourself asking others and asking god source universe however you think of god you know the source of everything so ask yourself ask others and ask god and each of those is equally important because you can't the ask starting with the ask yourself part you can't know where you're going unless you know where you are right now and the only way you're going to know where you are right now and where you're supposed to go is through an, this asking process that we describe in the book and so it all starts with where am I now? You know, if you start, that's like the critical phase number one. Where am I right now? Am I really happy with my life? Does it feel like I'm expressing my best? Or is there something deeper that I know I could be doing? You know, and so you start to uncover these truths about yourself. And then the second phase of that is where do I want to be? This is so important to define this for yourself. Like Mark did in our relationship. Where do I want to be? Do I see myself happily married with this ideal partner? And from that place, where, where do I want to be? We say, go to the nth degree of your imagination because God, we are the only animal on earth that has an imagination, right? And if you look at scripture, it says we're created in the creator's image. We create with our imaginations. We can literally, every great thing that's ever been created came from someone's imagination. It's this beautiful, magical thing. Every single person listening right now has that beautiful creator imagination. So go to the nth degree, of, you know, say it's in your relationship. You're asking, where do I want to be? Imagine the nth degree of your greatest relationship, nothing held back. And then ask the questions backwards. So you engineer that perfect relationship backward and understand what you want. Like in this perfect relationship of, of, of mine, what values do we share? You know, what things do we enjoy? Um, do we do adventures together? What are those adventures? And in this way, you start sculpting your perfect relationship. And as you become galvanized in that, you literally, by asking those right questions, become the magnet because that's part of the process. You need to become a magnet before you can magnetize that person you want to be with, right? And the only way you can get clear to become that magnet is by going through the asking process. And then the final phase of that asking yourself is what specific action steps do I need to take? Because once you define where you are now, where you want to be, you're going to have to take some action in this world. We're in this physical thing. When I, ideas will start to come to you and solutions and plans. So start to write them down, take action on that, write down the things that are coming to you, pick up the phone, call someone, look up that thing you thought of, take the next step of action and the next step and the next step. 
And pretty soon you'll start seeing yourself moving down that journey to your destiny, the, from the dreams in your heart to your destiny, which is the subtitle of our book. And it truly is an incredible experience. I appreciate you sharing that. And, and one of the questions that I was going to ask you that I had a brain fart before was um, revolving around the timing of asking a, a particular question. Is there such a thing as a good time to ask a particular question or should you just ask it? There's always a right question at the right time to the right person to get the right result right now. So the answer is yes. And when I went bankrupt in 1974, I didn't know the discernment I just gave. So I said, oh, my God, what if I go bankrupt? I go to the biggest library in the world at New York Library, check out a book, How to Go Bankrupt by Yourself. And went, <laughs> it was my best, worst experience because it got me out of what I shouldn't be doing and into what I should be doing. But, you know, it was very, very painful and not something I'd recommend and something a lot of your listeners are going through, I'm sure, right now in Australia. Yeah. Why do you think that a lot of people actually struggle with asking particular questions in the first place? You know, it's funny. Um, we're not wired to ask. We come into this world as, as little perfect children. Uh, we ask everything. We're super curious. We want to know who, what, when, where, why, mm -hmm. how. And then we pretty much aren't afraid to ask for anything. Like we feel like we deserve to have the things we want. And we do. That's our natural spirit state, right? But then life starts to crush us down depending on how you're parented, what happened in your school years, your jobs, your opinions not valued. You were told as a six-year-old, quit asking so many questions. I'm tired of hearing from you. Or your teacher says, do not ask anything unless I call on you. Pretty soon you're, you're this adult standing there terrified to ask for everything and almost feeling ashamed that you don't have all the answers, right? And that that is tragic because none of us has all the answers in a lifetime. We need to keep asking and gaining gaining that wisdom, but also evolving. That's why children ask so many questions because you're evolving. As adults, we stop evolving because we stop asking. And the studies we looked at show that people are so scared to ask. I mean, largely that everybody going into these different studies felt like if they ask someone, for information, advice, help, or just assistance in achieving or accomplish something, accomplishing something, that they would be perceived as being stupid, ignorant, uninformed, or pushy and obnoxious, right, if they're asking for help. And it turns out the studies revealed none of that's true. We just think that. We have these, these what we call the seven roadblocks inside of us that keep us from asking, but they're not true. They're not by, based on any truth. Because the truth is, the studies reveal that if you're just willing to put yourself out there and ask, there's an 80% more likely chance you'll get your, your request granted. That's a high likelihood. And that actually people like to help, but they're not going to insert themselves into your life until you ask. Yeah, it's a very interesting uh, line of thought, isn't it? Because I was always a very curious-minded kid, and I feel like society has conditioned a lot of young people nowadays especially with the advent of technology, they it's sort of like that detachment and that divide from actually being willing to ask questions. And now it's associated with a lot of fear, fear of rejection, fear of getting no, and how that relates to oftentimes an individual and their worth or their purpose. And I, I know that to be true for me in my life. My grandfather used to actually tell me all the time, he's like, if you don't ask, you don't get. So don't be afraid to ask. And I've taken that oftentimes now more recently into what I do. And that has sort of helped me uh, form better relationships with people and just detaching myself away from the fear. And I, because when I was growing up, I used to associate myself a lot with adults and I used to never kids because I wanted to grow. And the only way that I, I could grow was going up uh, up to adults and asking these wild, ridiculous and crazy questions. And I loved it. It probably it probably uh, annoyed the living daylights out of them, but I, I, I didn't care. <laughs> and then it was only, only later on in life that I, I kind of stopped doing that because I thought that if I was to ask someone a question, then I get rejected, especially with with women, if I asked you out, like I got to know, then yeah, it's just like this crazy vicious cycle. But now I, I love how you guys are saying, just ask anyway and, and see what happens. Like that's, that's the power of it. And like you, I grew up asking senior people, senior to me asking every question and even 
when I was in graduate school, I was 21 and hanging out with the smartest guy on the planet. I thought Bucky Fuller, the guy who invented GDS films, all this great stuff. So I asked him endless questions and he was always kind to answer because people who have real wisdom aren't afraid to answer. People who don't know put you down. So, you know, and that's what happened is you went to the right people <clears throat> and asked the right questions. And both of us have done that and been very blessed. And we do the best we can answering other people's questions because we want everyone to get a copy of Ask the Bridge from Your Dream of Destiny, but don't get one, get two, and go over it with either your spouse or spouse equivalent or your best friend or your church mate or your business mate, your mastermind partner, whomever that person is, and go through the questions and not only ask each other the questions, but be safe enough to either write them down or dictate the answers transcribe them longhand, whatever you have to do, because what happens is that if you keep it and looking at it, and what we're saying is create an ask journal, you'll illuminate. Now I've got yeah. over 50 years of ask journals in my office. And so I go back and I can look at exactly what I was thinking, feeling, doing, because it's your thinking and feeling that determine your future because you're here to create a great future. You're here to create, contribute, and, and be charitable. And, and that has to be in writing. Where do you want to go? What do you want to, who do you want to be? What do you want to do? And what do you want to have? It will determine where you want to go and who you want to go with, whom you want to go with. Yeah. Is there uh, a series of powerful questions that one person should be asking themselves to bridge that gap between just a dream and make it a reality? Yeah, definitely. We talk about a lot of those in the book and, uh, you know, there are self intervention questions, holding up the mirror questions, all these questions. Um, and Mark and I, um, we're actually because people are asking for more. They're like, are you guys going to do a book club or a webinar? So we're putting that together now where it's a free webinar. It's um, you can go to ask the book club after you buy the book, go to askthebookclub.com. But yeah, because we want to go deeper. I mean, there's so many layers to this. And the book is such a great guide. People have said this is like a course, but they want they want to elaborate on it. But it's not it's not like a boring course. It's like, I mean, if I do say it, it's got amazing stories that help you understand how these questions at the right time in the right way made all the difference. Pivot your destiny you know, um, reveal to you what was hidden because there's nothing, there is nothing in this world, no mechanism in this world that can reveal to you what is hidden, like asking. It is the thing, right? So the time you spend understanding this is life-changing. It really, really is. It will light your life up. And you cannot believe the letters we're getting of people just going, wow, my whole life has come back. Because we all tend to get a little stuck sometimes, and especially the, the you know, we've been through a lot these the last year and a half. You guys, you know, a little more than us, I think, a little more dramatic and traumatic. But um, you know, we we tend to look at our environment and and take our cues from our outside environment and start to get stuck in fear and and worry. And it's so important not to do that, right? We need to go into that internal space inside and ask those the right questions that'll keep us moving in the right direction. And so this book guides you to do that. And these things will be revealed. So you'll go, you know what? My life isn't over. It's just beginning. I just need to keep going. Um, all this is going to pass. And um, life is really, really good. And the only way we connect with other people in a, in a real way is through asking. It is amazing what it does in relationships. You were talking about, you know, wanting, you know, in the dating world. One of the best ways is not even to ask someone out for a date, but just start asking them a question about themselves people feel so in the in the studies that were done specifically on dating they found that the people who asked the better questions more questions and better questions were the ones who got the second date mm. because the reality is you know a lot of people go in and they're like oh i need to sell myself i'm this i'm that i've done this i've done that even in business or in dating and really we need to back it up a minute and go let me how about if I get to know this person? Because the only way we're going to have any relationship at all, whether it's a dating relationship or a business relationship, is if we create a bond with each other. And the only way, the only way you'll ever create a bond with someone is through questions, through asking questions so that you can understand them. They can reveal the answers to you. You can take those answers back 
and even do deeper probing questions so you get to know them deeper and deeper. And when that happens, something magical happens between two people. You start to go, wow, we share this thing. You know me a little bit and you care to know me. You're interested in me. And now I'm opening up and I'm sharing with you. And it's, it's really, it, it's so amazing. Mm. Yeah. Do you, do you want to add on to that, Mark? Or do you I do, it? actually. So thank you. Thank, you're so kind to us yeah, and, such, and a such a good interviewer. Is it, what, what, what happens is that I thought when I wrote those 267 things that, that I was looking for my um, soulmate. What we discovered once we integrated, because we can finish each other's thoughts and thinking and all that, is that there's a higher level of that, and that is called twin flame. And if this is a mastermind where one and one get together the power of 11, and you have two candles that are lit, you put them together and exponentially it goes up. That's what a twin flame is. And we're each other's twin flame. And as a result, we're two hearts making one giant mega soul. And, and what's happened, because we're on a couple of board of directors, we go to a fair amount of businesses, we own a couple of companies, and we read a lot of books, and we wanted to do all these podcasts and talk to everybody in the world and turn them on to their own success. Is that people keep saying, boy, you're the most formidable couple I've ever met. <laughs> you guys are just dang near invincible. But everybody is supposed, every, I believe, and I've never said this before, but I think, I assuming you're single, uh, are you single? I am. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Based on your questions, I was assuming that because Rumi says, listen to the question, you know where they are. Is it? Is it? What happens is that you're going to find your ideal person because you're handsome, you're good looking, you look like Clark right. Kent of Superman, right? <laughs> and, and, uh, too. You do. I mean, I don't, I'm not that, you know, the point is there's some perfect person out there right now, but you've got a definer. And what we're saying by asking questions is you ask questions for this principle and be able to listen, got to write it down. You've got to get definite with the infinite. The infinite's got an infinite amount of stuff, but you don't want the wrong one. Right. I had the wrong model. I wanted to get with the right model. I wanted to get definite <laughs> with the infinite. And I asked, everything I asked for was impossible. She had to be beautiful. She had to want to live long. She wanted to, to like me and she had to like me for me. She had to have her own money. You know, she had to, all this kind of stuff because I don't want somebody to marry me for my wallet. That's not, I did that. So I know that's not a good <laughs> that's program. Right? That's a dysfunctional level. And and she had to be fully functional, right? Self-actualizing human being. And and so I asked for absolutely impossible stuff because the, the infinite doesn't care. You can have it all. Right. But you've got to be clear what you're asking for, because with every, you know, the cliche in the street is at, be careful what you ask for, because you're going to get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you for so much for striking my ego there. <laughs> you're already in my good books. <laughs> um, I love how you mentioned, you know, get definite with infinite. I think that's a powerful powerful resource for people to use. I wrote it down actually, because uh, one of the things that I've struggled with is actually, you know, because I, I wanted the the one. And in 2019, I was with somebody who I thought that was going to be, you know, my forever somebody. And I didn't realize that it was toxic. I didn't realize that there were a number of things that uh, were going on that weren't good for my growth or uh, everything like that. And it was actually the best thing that could ever happen to me that she decided to end the relationship, right? Mm -hmm. And then I also realized after that, when I kind of rushed into things, I got lonely in 2020 and I, I went into another relationship and I realized three months in, hey, once again, I'm doing the wrong thing here. I, I And I made the choice to break it off. So now I'm in a much better place where I'm not in any rush whatsoever. I want to get to know a person wholeheartedly, be their friend first and ask those deep and meaningful questions that maybe they haven't been asked by anyone before. And, and, and then if that, if that person actually, and I, I watch for the way they respond and I'm, I'm very much interested in that now more than before, before I was just like, yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> but now, yeah, right, like, right. yeah, go for it. But let's hit one. The one word you hit with toxicity. The goals I wrote down is that she can't be an alcoholic. She can't be a drug. You got to understand what she can't be. Also, yeah. she can't be addicted to sugar, right? I mean, it just stuff that you'd say. Well, 
what does that matter? Well, it damn well matters because I don't want her to have diabetes and, and sugar is a front end cause all cancer. So right. it just, it, these are, I wrote down all the stuff I wanted, but also stuff that was, it, it is a, a borderline that is not acceptable. You use the word toxic, it would have been toxic to my spirit, my soul, yeah. my being. And and same for her. Absolutely. I am, you know, she didn't want an alcoholic. She didn't want somebody no who smoked way. or drank no or, or OD'd or chased women or any of that. I mean, we are going to, one of the words was, we're going to be heartfeltly monogamous, right? And and so we don't worry about each other or don't think about it and don't, you know, it just, you know, all those stories. So we don't have to even go there. <laughs> I'm, I'm interested in how do you, for some people that are actually wondering this, how do you actually find the right one? Is it like you you pray for the right one to just show up in your life or is there more to it than that? So it's really about sitting with yourself and asking those questions and defining that person, defining the relationship, because you really have to be it before you get it. Yeah. You have to look at yourself and, and ask yourself all of these things. How do I act? How do I respond? You know, what's my attitude? What's my emotional state? And then even ask yourself, would I want to go out with me? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And and make would sure you? through <laughs> make <Would> sure <laughs> that I would accept, you know, I'm not into girls. <laughs> so, <I know. laughs> so that wouldn't work. But you know what I mean? As a person, like, would you want to date you and why? And like all those questions help you define and become who you need to be again back to the magnet you need to become who you're trying to attract and when you become that person and when you visualize through that questioning process starting from the nth degree remember of your perfect relationship what that looks like what would you be doing how would you be talking to each other da, 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 da. imagine that then become that person that you want to be and the minute you become that person it is amazing you will start to have things just naturally start flooding to you. The right person will come, but you can't push and you can't be in a hurry. What you should be passionate about is becoming that person, yeah. right? Yeah. It's often that, that saying, right, who you are, you often will attract. And exactly. it's so, so true. And I've only just realized it now, to be honest with you, and I'm, I'm 25, so I'm still quite young. I'm still loving the process of learning um, and, and hopefully people that are listening to this can take away what you guys are saying. It's, it's valuable information. Uh, I have a couple more questions for you both, if that's okay with you, because I'm, I, I feel like I could speak to you both forever. Um, yeah. but I wanted to ask you a, a, a deeper question and that is what has been the most vulnerable moment for each of you in your life? You want to go first? I, I think going bankrupt was really a stretch for me because I thought I was a failure and I thought my self-worth and net worth were the same. And I, and, and there's so many people struggling so painfully and hanging on by their fingernails right now in Australia, which my heart goes out and soul goes out to each and every one of you because the government has no right to shut down freedoms because like we said, you got to have time freedom, money freedom, relationship freedom, purposeful freedom, doing your creative stuff. And and it just it is a, a government imposed mandate, and that's a tragedy. So the the point is, you need to write yourself out of that and say, where will I go when I this freedom breaks? Because freedom will resurrect itself. How's that? There's a good interesting term, and and see what it is we can do and be and have. Love that. How about for you, Chris? For me, I honestly, the, the most vulnerable time in my entire life was when I was very young. I was one of those kids that found high school to be easy and kind of unchallenging. So I graduated myself at age 16. I accelerated my curriculum, married my boyfriend who was five years older, um, turned out to be not a great life plan because two and a half years later, I'm um, in a new city with no family and friends, divorced, baby on my hip, no idea how I'm going to support myself. And I did all, what I could think of was to apply for food stamps to get food and diapers. So I remember standing there at the grocery counter that day, getting ready to turn over my food stamps for the for the food and diapers. And I had the most amazing epiphany that I will never ever forget because for a second it felt like a light was shining on my head. Like, and I, a question dropped into my mind talking about questions. First, it was like, how did I get here? Followed by this powerful question that was, are you doing the best you can to get out of this situation or are you taking the easy way out? And it was honestly in that moment, it was that moment of truth. I felt 
kind of like busted. Like I knew I wasn't doing the best I could. And I didn't even know what that was. I was so young, but I just knew I, I, you know, this wasn't me. There's something bigger inside of me. And I just, in that minute, that split second, I had this pivot mentally and emotionally. I was like, as I was turning over those food stamps, I'm like, this will not be my future. I didn't say that out loud, but I was like really kind of panned them over in a really fierce way. And I went home and I just, it's in my little apartment where I was getting eviction notices every month. And I'm like, I didn't have the answers, but I knew I had questions. And I just started asking like, who would hire me? What, what, could, what could I do to earn money tomorrow? And the second I started asking, I remembered hearing on the radio, the temp, these temporary service companies, one, it was Kelly, Kelly Services. And I called them up. I was like, how do I apply? They had me fill out the paperwork. They start sending you jobs every day. You can say yes or no. Suddenly I'm working, you know, filling in at uh, lawyers' offices, attorneys' offices, and doing all kinds of stuff. And, uh, you know, working at conventions, doing sales and things like that. And, um, you know, setting up booths at malls and, and this sort of thing. And I started learning so much about life and myself. And I actually became fascinated. I really learned that I love sales and I loved small business. I was so fascinated with the idea that you could just be a person and decide, I'm going to start a business and I'm just going to put some money together and put my idea out there. I think that's so, that was so amazing to me. So I decided to put myself through real estate school. I'd made enough money. And then at the same time, someone approached me and said, you should do some modeling. So, um, I walked in and asked this talent agents to sign me. And after like stumbling down the runway and like reading some lines of script, they signed me. And uh, a year and a half later, fast forward a little more than that, I'm now working as a licensed realtor for the top home builder in our valley. I became the number one realtor. And I had done some television commercials for the talent agency and they went national. So I was getting these huge royalties. And I did so enough money in royalties that my baby and I, my son and I had like the best insurance benefits possible at the time screen because I had to had to join Screen Actors Guild when I made enough money with it with the royalties. So it was just a a magical time because I thought, what just happened there? I would sit there and think about it like I was going like this and just that question made me pivot. Are you doing the best you can? Are you taking the easy way out? And I think a question like that. If you answer it courageously and honestly to yourself, those questions to yourself can be so powerful, so life changing, um, you know, and it, it certainly was for me. I can relate to both of your stories. Uh, and I was actually broke uh, in 2019. I decided to leave my real estate job that I was getting pretty good at. Uh, and, uh, I turned down a number of high paying jobs to do this and to go and work for disabled people, uh, as a casual. And I had all these bills piling up. I mean, it's a wild, wild story, but that helped me all find my purpose, find, uh, my worth and allowed me to ask those questions that I wasn't asking myself that I was too afraid to ask. So I appreciate the fact that you both didn't give up that you kept at it and that you both are here today uh, telling the story, which is honestly amazing. I, I, I believe you guys are teasing me to ask you more questions, but I won't. <laughs> I'm going to have to bring, bring you both back on at a later date again for, for part two. Uh, but this is a question that I haven't asked in a while, actually, but I wanted to ask you both. If you were to ask a question to anyone alive or dead, who would it be? Why? And what question would you want to ask them? I would uh, love to talk to the Apostle Paul. He was the poet laureate of the Bible, uh, did over half the New Testament. We've been to everywhere like Corinth and seen where he literally talked to 25,000 people. It's not maybe he did it. Um, and But I would like to meet him, sit with him, and, and uh, go over, A, how he thought the thoughts he did. How did he channel the greatest speeches that live and uh, wrote the stuff when he was in the most, we've been, I've been in the uh, in Rome where he was in the, uh, the prison that you walk down and you go, this is a grovel. And somehow somebody brought him paper and a pen and he wrote these amazing things like first and second Corinthians. And you go, oh man, how did the boy do that? Yeah. I have a few, Crystal. 
So for me, um, I know this is going to sound kind of slower, but I, Jesus, like, how did you do those miracles? And how did you stay fearless, absolutely fearless in the face of the work, you know, and just it would be so amazing to, to be able to ask so many questions, you know? Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I, for me, those would be the two people that I want to ask as well. And it's just a, an amazing phenomenon how Jesus in particular has basically touched the hearts and lives of billions of people across the world. He didn't have social media. He didn't have, uh, he didn't have anything like that. But yet his message just carried. And, yeah, there'd be so many questions that I want to ask Jesus in particular and and same with the Apostle Paul, but even um, I, I want to ask Moses too, like what were you thinking at the burning bush. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Moses would be fascinating, right? I mean, and why did you get stuck in the desert for so long wandering around? <laughs> you knew cartography. You're a 30, third degree Mason. You're the best trained guy the Pharaoh had. You're the Pharaoh's kid. Yeah. Exactly. Like, why? <laughs> but anyway, I believe that when we do one day get to heaven, a lot of those questions that I have would be answered the moment I get there. But um, I yes. still just want to sit there and ask a million and one questions. But anyway, um, sure. I could, I want to ask you guys, where can people connect with you, learn more about you and buy a copy of your new book? Yeah. So the best place to get the book, of course, is Amazon, you know, amazon.com. Um, it's at Barnes and Noble and other places, but I think worldwide, because you guys are in Australia, you can get it in every form, Kindle, the hardcover, um, and the audiobook is great too. People sometimes they get both because they want to have the book to highlight, yeah. but then they like to hear the principles again. It's funny how many people do that, like to play it again in the audio. Um, it starts with this amazing, if I we do say so, the fable of Michaela, which is just totally people are seeing themselves in the fable big time. It's it's really brought a lot of tears to grown men uh, men's eyes. It's 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 an amazing phenomenon. I'm like so thankful for it. Um, so that is is the book. And then um, then once you get the book, please go to askthebookclub.com. We'd love to have you join us for the free book club webinar. Um, and then of course I'm on social media everywhere. Crystal Dwyer Hansen. Facebook, Instagram, Crystal Dwyer Hansen, D-W-Y-E-R. And then, of course, Mark Victor Hansen, all of the Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, all of those places. Um, so, that, yeah, that's the best place to reach out to us and connect. And please do connect. We love staying connected with people. And join askthebookclub.com, please. Yeah. It's just, it's wonderful. We want everyone to grow up and become master askers. It's it's available because the two things God gave humans that no one else has got is the ability to ask and use imagination like yeah. Crystal was articulating. Yeah, I didn't actually dive into the creativity aspect of asking and all that sort of stuff, maybe for another time. But my yep, final sure. final question for you both, this is my all-time favorite question. I ask everyone at the end of my conversations. It's a hypothetical one, but I want you both to imagine with me that you've been able to reach the age of 100. I think, Mark, you wanted to live to over 100. So uh, when, you get, when you do get to the age of 100, your friends and your family have decided to put together a film for you of everything you've ever said and everything you've ever done. Don't ask me how in the world they got it all. We'll just call it magic for the sake of argument. But they've been able to get it and show it to you on your 100th birthday. What do you want that film to say and to show about your life? That I, made, that I made a positive, worthwhile, and important impact that changed people's lives, transformed for the better. My dear? Mine, I think I would wanted to say that I helped um, many, many individuals find the greatest version of themselves inside so that they could live a really happy, fulfilling life. Powerful send-off message. Mark and Crystal Hansen, thank you so much for your time today, your story, you. your light, everything, and for joining me today on the Storybox podcast. We're so happy to be with you, Jay. Thank you for having us.